do it. Oh my no, god. No, that's the setup. That's the setup right there. That's the setup. Uh and it was kind of like good one. It was another good one. <laughs> it was like the the symmetry and the poetry of this show, bro. Cause you know, for the whole what three seasons, we were like, you know, what's in the cellar, you know, and then they bring you to Rainer, like, oh yeah, I know everything now. Yes, I'm here. I'm at your home spot. What you gonna do? <laughs> exactly. I done rolled up. Look, I done rolled up. I done kicked in your door, rolled up in your house, and took a whole box of ball points. I went straight to Terry <laughs> Tate office linebacker in your in your crib, man. What you gonna do? Like <laughs> I got I got your successor to bring you to me, your greatest me, threat. Right. So right. Like what else am I planning? Like it's, like, been, it's been four <laughs> years. Guess what? I'm not on Paradise Island, Playboy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 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 in your set. <laughs> Damn, look. So I still I still want to know. I still want to know why um what happened and why his leg is cut off. And tied it. I mean, it, it probably, I mean, I'm thinking it was pro- probably done on purpose knowing he would heal, but they tied it off to keep it from happening so he could work undercover. That's what I'm thinking. But, yeah, dude, oh my God. Oh yeah. my God. I, I, I yeah. absolutely believe that Aaron has been self inflicting these to himself because it, it, it goes with the MO of the character. Aaron bit off his fingers to just try to, you know, transform. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of like I remember the last time that he used the um, the founding titan ability, his fingers were gone. And then they just reappeared as soon as right. he, you know. As so soon, right, it, it, right, right. <laughs> so what I'm so what I want to know is when we left Aaron, Aaron was uh-huh. like Aaron's whole demeanor had changed. He yeah. went from being this loud mouth kid that just wanted nothing more than to kill and eradicate all the Titans. Once he got, once he got the, um, once he got to, um, once he touched, um, old girl, um, what's her name? Historia. Yeah. And was able to open up those things he didn't see before, like his father's past and all that. Yeah. He became much more calm much more composed and yep. his only focus was going to the uh, seeing what was beyond the sea yep i, I want to know what happened in the last four years that got him back to being like he was in the first episode but just more composed yeah. you know like he like the look in his eye was like you know i'm here for you chill out like i'm here for yeah. you and you you know i'm just like you so what's good yeah yeah it's 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 kind of like if you think about from the first episode up until mm-hmm. this point which now I, mean, I don't know how many years that technically is but he's been groomed to the place that he is right now and on top of that we don't know how many residual memories and understandings that he's getting now because when we last saw him you know, he was starting to recall memories from the past that were implying memories about the future. So it's like right. we have no idea what Aaron is truly understood, capable of at this point at all. Like, and on top of that, it's like, like I said, like, I mean, you still got Levi Misaka, who are certifiable assassins that could be anywhere at any time. And between him and Armin, like they have some seriously deadly titans and that's just facts like i mean they have the element of surprise it's just right. now we don't know what do they stand to do with causing a ruckus at this point because it seems like it's not just you know them randomly going to decide to destroy the festival it feels like because they know everybody around us, the enemies of the Marlins are around, I think is to add disruption. I really feel like it's, it's a calculated decision because if any other time to make Marlins look weak, this is the time to strike. It really is. Um, But dude, the episode, man, was just, 
the writing is just oh, insane. Writing's awesome. Writing's awesome. What the in, you may interesting, you make a point though about not being time to strike, because we have to remember as far as as far as the mainland is concerned, anyone on these island is lower than anyone on the main. So the Marlians have no respect for them. And the Eldians who are stuck in this Stockholm slavery syndrome yep. also have no respect for anyone that's on Paradise Island. So, yep. so you have become, you know how they tell you the world is only going to ever unite when there's a threat bigger than the world, like yep. quote unquote alien invasion and all that. Yep. That's what they are. That's what Paradise Island is. It's yep. probably the one thing where the Elden Lands will unite to take out. Like that just makes, that's just so crazy to me. And he has been, I mean, the impression we have is that he's been there for four years. You know, I mean, it may have been shorter for all we know. We just know from season three to this final season, it's been four years. So yep. I'm trying to figure out now what I'm trying to figure out the shoe that's about to drop because I think they're all there. I think it's a coordinated effort. I think Levi, Mikasa, um, <clears throat> Armin, and Aaron are there. And I also think that somewhere along that line, um, Commander, uh, what's his name? Ir Irvin. Irvin is going to finally get to see what they saw in Aaron's, Aaron's uh, old home and then make his way across the sea as well. Like, I I, I, I think that's what's going to happen. Because remember, Commander Irvin wanted to see what was in that cellar. Yeah, so but he died. Did he? I don't, yeah. I mean, I didn't that know that remember, so remember, uh, um, Levi had an option. He could have given it to Armin to save Armin, or he could have given it to Irvin, but Irvin said, no, don't give it to me, no, give it to somebody else. Yeah, it to and Armin. so right. Irvin died. But I, I personally mm -hmm. never felt like, I didn't think that that was gonna, I, I feel like something's fishy about that, but I, I don't know. That's, that's right, and, and, exactly, that's my thing. Like that didn't, that seemed pretty fishy. Like I. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if Irvin found a way to still survive. You know, I'd have been like, oh, psh, makes sense. At this point, I don't trust <laughs> Attack on Titan and find out in finality. Anymore. Yeah. You know, no. like, what did we go through? We went through a whole third season, I think, without knowing what's happened to, um, to Leonhardt. Like, she's still encased herself. We don't know what's going to happen there. So, yep. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, so it's crazy. It's just crazy to me thinking about this season where up until this episode technically was the first time we got reintroduced to the fray of the people that we've known. And right. they've been building up these random characters in Colt and Falco and Gabby and building yeah. their backstory, building their importance. And it's mm -hmm. like... Oh, and connecting them to... Some of the main characters, you know, connecting, connecting um, Colt to Reiner. Oh, I'm sorry, connecting Falco to Reiner, to Reiner's past and what was done to him. He's literally doing to Falco what was done to him. You know, it's Gabby is basically. Weird. Yeah. It's weird yeah. to me because technically Aaron is related to Falco. Like that's his cousin. Straight up, like yeah. think about it from from yeah. uh, his dad having Zeke, and in between everything else, like they are they are related, and it's just weird, bro. Like, yeah, I ain't gonna say it's some black on black crime, wait, but oh, wait, it's, so, it's, so it's Fal Falco. <laughs> so Falco, and, so wait, did we did we get confirmation? Falco and Colt are Zeke's sons. I think that that's that's their uncle. That's their uncle. I think. Okay. From my understanding, yeah. I thought that was the last thing. Well, no, it's got to be their son because I don't remember. Um, I don't remember 
Zeke's mom having any more children. I thought he was it because he turned them in, right? Right. But my, my question is, did Zeke marry someone and have Falco and Colt? We still haven't got confirmation. We, on we that. haven't got confirmation on that. We know all. they're related, but we don't. We don't know. Yeah. We, we we just not, we just don't know. And we, yeah, man, I don't know, man. Yeah, like I'm still I'm trying to I'm still trying to get the connection because I know Colt and Falco are brothers. I know Colt is supposed to inherit the Beast Titan. Rhino yep. wants Falco to inherit the armor titan and keep Gabby from experiencing what he has. Not only that, because that's his keeping cousin. Her from, yeah. 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 Keeping her from having a 13 year shelf life after that. Um, so I'm definitely, yeah, I'm still trying to see the connection though between Zeke and these two because I think at the end of the day, What's going to happen at some point is Zeke and Aaron are going to face off, you know, and oh, Zeke's yeah. mindset yeah. now, yeah, because they failed on Paradise Island, Zeke's mindset is basically, because when you think about it too, Aaron is basically the splitting image of his father. So here is this guy who's the splitting image of your, of your dad who you basically turned in and, and, and turned, tra turned traitor against, you know, yeah. um, and here basically, Aaron is basically the the, the splitting image, of the, the, the reminder of his transgression, basically. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, and it it's so weird. So, so good, such good writing, how they're all connected, you know? Like, technically, if it wasn't for Zeke, Aaron's mom, well, Aaron probably would have never existed, but Aaron's mom wouldn't have been killed. <laughs> yep. Yep. So that's, and it's, that's it's crazy. I'll say this out of all the uh, anime I've watched, this might be, well, I'll take that back. Tokyo Ghoul, I felt the same way. This might be one of the only other animes I've watched that makes me feel like I could go back and read the mangas just because the story is so oh. full. Every character right. is so, so cool. I, yeah, so ironically, prior to us starting this final season, I actually did create a shopping list on Amazon to, <laughs> of all <laughs> chapters, of all the volumes of Attack on Titan. And That's once we get once we get out of this whole government shut the potential government shutdown thing, and yeah, I'm gonna order, I'm gonna order those because I've already got I've got the full, I don't have many mangas. Mm. Um, neither do I have as many in the full collection, but the only two mm. full collections of manga I have are uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh series and mm. Shaman King. So mm. I've always, I mean, I had a couple others, like I have a couple Full Metal Alchemists and I have, um, I have two Afro Samurai and two Case Closed, but um, I've always wanted to like really add another branch to that. And I think another complete branch and i think that's going to end up being attack on titan because i wasn't what i wasn't expecting was for attack on titan to be such to not i was expecting it to be what we thought it was going to be like you know monsters and trying to defeat them you know that kind of thing but it's really all political satire yep 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 like it's it is, really a, a political satire. yeah it's it's somebody i know somebody a long time ago made made this a comparison to game of thrones i didn't understand what they meant at the time because i just assumed it was like oh man anybody can go but what i didn't realize how deep you know the character exchanges really are because i mean again this season we got introduced to all these new younger characters and they all are very pivotal even the smallest ones because if for some reason something is left astray with Falco or, or Gabby, say hypothetically speaking, Gabby's been following Falco, like following what he's been interacting with uh, Aaron this whole entire time. And she leaks that joint, you know, that would give her mm -hmm. a one up to get the armor Titan. She would do that. 
Yeah. And it's like you wouldn't See, know. I, I, like, you would do that. You, you I would. Have I no wouldn't clue. be surprised. I certainly would not be surprised by that. But I also think even if she was to do that, um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Ooh. And uh, my apologies, air went down the wrong yeah. pipe. Um, uh, I think if she was to do that, I think Reiner would do something to ensure that Falco gets it. Like even if it would be forced Falco to become a Titan and just be there as food, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I think that would, I think that for sure would end up being the case. Because it always yeah. seems to go sideways. It always seems to go sideways when there's something you want. Like when Reese wanted his story to eat Aaron, you know, and she basically said, no. Nah. Like it all, when, when somebody wants something to happen when it pertains to devouring, passing on Titans, especially those nine, um, yeah, something always goes left. Something always Yeah, goes it, left. it really does. Ne it never fails. And it's just going to be interesting because, again, I, we were talking about it while we were doing the reaction, but Gabby, at this point to me, I don't know if she deserves the Titan. But worse than that, I feel like she would do anything to make sure she has it, even kill. Which is, even which is why up. she doesn't. Which is why yeah. she doesn't deserve it. And I, I agree with you on that, which is why she doesn't deserve it. Because mm -hmm. I could see her, unfortunately, killing Falco in cold blood just, just mm -hmm. to make sure, yep. you know, that she gets it. And it's, I, think, I think that's the thing where it's like, what is this? What is this, How much time does Aaron have left at this point? I can't remember uh, the time stamp they have. Is it uh, eight years? Is it? No, I think he's got, I, yeah, it's 13 years, but. I'm thinking he's got, I don't think he's got that many years left. I, I know he's got more than Zeke. Reiner and Zeke. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I'm trying to think. Because I can't remember. I can't um. remember. I, I think it's been, well, he said it was four years. So from the end of season three to now, it's been four years. So mm -hmm. the question really is, how many years has he been the attack titan and, unbeknownst to him, the founding titan between season one, where he now, um, gets eaten, you know, or season one period? Yep. You know, because remember, when he becomes the attack titan, he had already been that way. You know, he just didn't remember it. So he was already the attack titan. So his shelf life was already going. So, yep. but between season one and season three, I don't know how long it's been. Yeah, it's it's yeah. no way for us to really kind of know. Only reason I bring it up is because, it, you know, when you have a shelf life, you got people that are desperate, you know, and right. you, you don't know where certain situations are going to go when you have like young people here. Because they honestly, if they were keeping this going for another season, they could do a whole nother time jump where these kids are adults and we could go into a right. whole nother thing with this. But I liked your right. idea of but taking then, these characters yeah. into a whole different series, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so here's the question I'll pose to you though, now that you bring that up, especially that we talked about the shelf life, does the shelf life count towards Aaron? Because Aaron is, yes, he's the attack Titan, but he's the founding titan. So if he was yeah. able to find some, so so I think what's going to happen is Aaron, whether it's intentionally or unintentionally, it may be intentionally seeing as he already understands how the titan works or the fact that um, there are things he can do as the communicator because, so I thought about this for a minute. Uh -huh. um, I didn't realize it before, but when he when he touched Historia the first time, right? 
she unlocked powers for him, right? That he or memories, right? Mm-hmm. Same thing when when he was same thing when he touched her at when she became queen, you know, he was able to uh yes and unlock those unlock those powers again, see more memories. Yeah. What hadn't dawned on me, because I hadn't I, I hadn't caught on to it, was that when he faced the smiling titan, which was Grisha Yeager's first wife, right? Mm-hmm. The reason he was able to control the Titans was technically she's royalty. Yeah. She was she was she was the royal line that remained um on, on Marley till they got caught. So the reason he was able to do stuff was when he, I didn't realize it at the time, but when he punched her palm and was able to communicate and get the other Titans to basically tear her apart, he was touching royalty. So I think he now has an understanding of that. And he's doing is if he can, if he can get a hold of someone that's royalty, who can help him unlock, you know, kind of like, you know, when Rogue, in 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 Marvel, when Rogue got her powers because she held on to Captain Marvel too long, maybe if Aaron does the same thing with royalty, he can actually unlock the full power of the founding Titan. Yeah, and who I mean, to it's... Say if, if he's able to fully unlock that, who's to say the thirteen-year shelf life applies to him? Because we've it's... never gotten th- th- that impression when it came to the fountain type founding Titan. Is is really hard to gauge because it seems like with certain titans, there's kind of like we were talking about the 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 titan that kind of is like the the carrier titan, like they can just stay in that form indefinitely. Like that's a that's a special perk. Yeah. So it, yeah. it's it's very possible yeah. that if Aaron is keeping in close contact with Hysteria, um that he can do whatever he wants to do. It's that's one of the things when we ended the third season, I was kind of like, why doesn't he just tell, you know, her what's going on? Because when he remember when at the end of the third season, why didn't Errol Aaron tell who? Um, Hysteria. Uh, what's her name? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When he touched her hand and kissed her hand, we still don't know what he saw. But I'm just saying that if he would have told her from Rip you know, what he knows, I'm pretty sure she would go and rally behind him. All she got to be doing is just touching him and he can do whatever he wants to do. But, right, you know, the other side of that is, you know, he could have let himself get eaten. But I questioned what if he ate her? What if she became a Titan and he ate her? I don't know how that's going to work because because she didn't have a titan within her. I mean, no, I see what, what you're if, saying. No, I see what you're saying. If he had ingested her, he would then be imbued with royal blood, which means maybe he would have been able to um, use it. But I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how. I'm not sure if that if that would work. work. Because I sure know that if, that if she work. eats him. It would work for her, but yeah. then she would be she would um what's the word? She would be possessed by the by the yeah. curse of freaks and yeah. and yeah. you know wipe people's memory and maintain the whole the walls yeah. and everything else. So yeah. so what I'm thinking is I'm thinking and the other piece about that was that I don't know if that was gonna work because yes, yeah, she would rally behind them, but they just overthrew a conspiracy. Right, they just yeah. revealed that that she's actual real royalty. The person on the king, the king on the throne, was a fraud. So she wouldn't be able to just leave at that point and go across and go across the the the, the sea with him like that because she just became queen, you know. So she has her own duties to do. Maybe if they overthrew and you know, had someone in her place till she returned that they trusted and she went over there and did it, it would be, you know, that could work because if, if God forbid something happened and she dies, whoever she left in the place would just become, I guess, technically the new royalty and just keep doing the job. Yeah. However, um, yeah, she can't leave at that point. She just became queen, you know, yeah. so 
I think he's gonna find somebody on Marley that's of royal blood. And who's to say, actually, here's the thing, who's to say that his powers won't activate when he when he gets into a battle with um with Zeke? Because Zeke I mean, is that, technically royal royal blood. I mean, that's that goes back to what we were saying before. If Colt and uh Falco are Zeke's sons, he don't even need to be in contact. That that's true. That's true. You've got it's, yeah, it's, you've it's, got so, it's, paths. it's so many different ifs. And I love that about the story because even when you look at the yep. promotional art for this season, hysteria isn't anywhere up there. I was yeah. honestly, I was fearing the worst that I was like, man, maybe, maybe your boy Aaron went cold blood and just killed it. Like straight up, I, I I don't know. I don't put anything past anybody at this point now because right. the the stakes are beyond comprehension at this point. Before mm-hmm. it was kind of like we started at square one. It's like you know, we can't survive against these Titans. We got to do everything we can to survive. Then you got this one pocket like, oh, mm-hmm. Aaron's a Titan. What does that mean? We're going to survive, but we probably won't, you know, to now where right. it's like, not only are we surviving, but we're trying to conquer mm-hmm. a whole nation. What? <laughs> like, right. the show right. is crazy, bro. It's crazy. I, I, still, I still stand by what my thought is. I think somehow Aaron... Uh, is going to be the one to activate somehow the full powers of the Titan, the full power of, of the founding Titan, you know, and control all the others. And he's probably going to find a way, even if it means sacrificing himself, which I think it might, to basically eradicate the Titans either with their host or without their host. Because my thing is, you're the founding titan. If you're the founding titan, you're technically the first "quote unquote" god, if you will. If you are mm-hmm. the if you are the founding titan, who's to say you can't control the other nine or other eight, and you can't control the the Eldians who have your blood? Anyway, you should be able to do that, which means you should be able to do whatever you want. So even if you decide yep. to say, well, I'm not going to kill everybody. I'm just going to set it so that the Titan power is taken back and no one in Eldia, no Eldian can, or, or anyone period can ever use the Titans again. Like that's a wrap. Only person that got it is me. And I'm chucking deuces on everybody. Cause it's the only way, you know, you can do it. It's kind of yeah, like, right. the, yeah, it's kind of like wrath the Titans when, um, Zeus was um, not when Zeus, when all the all the gods were gone and Hades was the only one left and he was powerless so he gets to live like a human so there's no more gods. I think that would be the case here where Aaron would be the only one with it and maybe go somewhere sacrifice himself. He would have to do something that would make because if you're the founding titan you can do something that can um that would sacrifice you know that meet that would make that would assure that no other Eldian can attain the the, um the titan powers you know which would definitely hurt marley because marley now becomes vulnerable you know because that's what their biggest issue is they don't have those titans anymore um so i think that i i I still see i still see something like that happening i think at the end of the day we're going to end up back at season one with um aaron's first pledge after his mom was eaten that he's going to get rid of all the titans i think at the end yeah. of the day that's still the goal for aaron at some point even if it's taken the long way around you know um i think he's going to end up doing it anyway but still there's just like you said there's so many possibilities man there's yeah, so many different and, ways this thing could go left and, and i love and, it and uh we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna stop you guys just for time hope you guys enjoyed our review uh, as you can tell, it it got its hype. Yeah. Uh, as far as the episode concern, I the setup and execution of it to me was like ten out of ten level because it makes the oh, next yeah. episode look like anything could happen. And I love the setup as much as the punchline always for me. But um, but yeah, I ain't got nothing else, man. I think we're good to go. <laughs> All right, you guys. Hope y'all have a blessed one. Hope y'all have a blessed one.
<laughs> happy holidays. We'll see y'all in the new year yep. for the next episode review. Peace, everybody.